Hey, hi boys and girls. Um, welcome back to Monroe Live. And uh, today what we're going to do is Corey and I are going to kind of recap what, what happened uh, when we were out in, uh, in uh, Portland, Oregon at the, um, at the, the big show that Archimoto uh, put on. Uh, we had a good time. Mm -hmm. um, what was the name, the correct name? It was FUV and Friends Summer Showcase. Yeah. And it was at Portland International Raceway. Right, and uh, so we got a chance to um, look at the cars, look at the new technology, um, talk to a bunch of people about a variety of different things, all the way from uh, how maybe the um, Archimoto could be improved to uh, recycling batteries and on and on. It, 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 was, uh, it was a pretty good show. I had a, I had a riot. I, it was a great time. I think, uh, I think they did a good job. Yeah, and first of all, there was hundreds and hundreds of people there. They yeah. said they sold 800 tickets, right. but we probably saw four or 500 people there. Yeah, I would say, and they rotated as well. Yeah. So it's hard to say who was there and who wasn't. Yeah. Um, the guys from Aptura were supposed to be, uh, Chris and Steve were supposed to be there, but uh, didn't make it, I don't yeah. know. They're in the process of uh, trying to more funding, so they, maybe they and got tied up. They had a really nice stage there. Maybe we can pop yeah. up some B-roll of that. And yeah. Mark Fraunmeyer got up on stage and gave a nice little overview of where they're at. Then the governor of Oregon was there. Yeah. Um, her name yeah. is Kate Brown. Yeah. She, um, uh, she, she gave shook our hands and stuff like that. She was happy to see us. Yeah. Told us we should move to, <laughs> <laughs> to Oregon. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, there was a lot of uh, influential mm -hmm. people there. Yeah. And Archimoto revealed three major uh, new um, initiatives. initiatives. One was vectored steering right. with a company called Stoffel. And maybe yep. you can talk yeah. about that a little bit. Yeah, well that, um, okay, so um, <coughs> Corey, uh, Corey and I were kind of um, interviewed a lot. And... Um, and so consequently, um, I went on a ride uh, with somebody else steering uh, in a normal one. Went around the course once at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I think it was just like, um, you know, Sandy the Trick Pony or something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But anyway, so I went around on, that, uh, on it on the first time. But uh, that was in the, um, current, um, the current product. And uh, then later on, we got a chance to find out about the, uh, the vectored steering. And I'm very interested in that. And that is something that apparently I didn't know, but uh, the guys here at Monroe that are working on the uh, project, they knew about it. And uh, they were very, very enthusiastic and excited, but I, was, I guess they were told to keep it quiet, let Sandy be surprised. And I was. Mm -hmm. I drove that thing. And with the vectored steering, I'm, uh, what a difference. It makes a huge difference when, um, for those who don't know what vectored steering is, it means that the, when you turn the handlebars, um, the wheel on the inside is going to run slower than the one on the outside. Now in your car, <clears throat> you've got a differential that takes care of that. But when you're, um, but when you're in a, um, uh, on the Archie motorbike, <clears throat> it was a direct drive. So by putting in vectored steering, and this is a software upgrade that's going to go into all the Archimotos, mm -hmm. I guess. <clears throat> what it'll do is it'll, it'll allow you to take corners um, in a better way. And I, I'm, really, I'm really excited about it. I, I'm telling you what, the drive differential between the normal Archimoto and this one is just sensational. It's like double fun. Yeah, and, and the best part is they can accomplish it with a software upgrade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's not a hardware change, it's a software change. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing that we're going to be able to do is take out the, um, the power steering pump that's in there, or sorry, not power steering, it's a power steering motor that's inside the, uh, the unit right now. Uh, that'll disappear, which gives us a weight reduction and a bunch of wires and whatnot that are going to disappear because... Quite frankly, everything is already there for this software, the software change. Mm -hmm. So I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. And Archimoto already has the deliverator, but one thing they revealed at this showcase was the the pickup. The pickup. It had a small flatbed, so they eliminate the rear passenger and put a what would you say? It's a three foot by four. Well, foot? it's it stretches too, yeah. which is really cool. Um, so it's so the width of the car. So I'd say three by five would be a, about right. But then you can you it's got uh, like a little gib slide, and you can slide it out 
and uh, the, the edges out and fill her up. Yeah, and that slide was provided by a company called SherpTech, which was yeah. there. They, SherpTech makes slide out beds for larger F 350s and yeah. other vehicles. Yeah. So they were there. Um, a lot of the partners for Archimoto were there and they yeah. had booths. So it was quite an event. Well, going back to that SherpTech thing, they had it filled up with um, um, boogie boards, tents, sleeping bags, paddles, um, food, uh, clothes, the works. And they said it was like for um, um, like a five day kind of adventure and they had everything in there. I mean, I was totally blown away and that was for two. So I, I was totally blown away by how much stuff they could get in there and the way they packed it and everything. It was just a really, really cool. They really did a good job. Mm -hmm. Shriptech mm -hmm. was, uh, that was one of the highlights. If you're looking for like a fun vehicle and you want to take two or three days out, this is, uh, this is the ticket. This is really yeah. good. The last thing that was showcased, uh, Jesse Fittipaldi pulled up on stage and he had an Archimoto with doors, half doors. Yeah, half that doors. That were real yeah. nice. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to talk about what you thought about the doors. Well, I'm, uh, I'm a fan of Archimoto with no doors. But um, there's a ton of people that would like to have a door, that, I don't know, for security or what have you. Um, maybe they thought they might fall out. Who knows? But to me, uh, doors off on a Jeep is where I'd like to be. Tragically, my wife doesn't like that <laughs> idea. But, uh, <clears throat> but I like the idea of no doors on the Archie Motor. In and out is really quick. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I guess, neutral on that. What did you think? I thought the fit and finish... And the function of them were really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, that part was good. Yeah. And, you know, you have to have a, a balance of lightweight and concise build structure. And I thought they did a nice job. Mm. Well, for those who want doors, um, you'll be able to get them soon. But the one feature that I really liked the best was uh, the lean technology that, uh, that comes out. And that will allow Archimoto to basically... As you going into a sharp turn, okay, so the wheels are vectoring. So this wheel is, let's say I'm going around the corner like this. This wheel is going to run a little slower than that one so that you don't tear up the tires and, and also it makes you feel more comfortable. But then on top of it, you've got the ability to lean the bike. So the front wheels, the front uh, suspension, actually they can drift. So now what can happen? You go into the corner, the the, the bike starts to lean, the vectoring takes over, and now what you've got is something that is akin to, I think, uh, a good racing bike. I think this would be, normally you don't see three-wheel bikes racing. This is going to be, this is a game changer. Yeah. This is going to make a huge difference from, uh, for somebody who's really into racing and whatnot. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be fabulous. I can hardly wait to see that one. Yeah, and that technology was from Tilting Motorworks. Correct. Yeah. They had a tent and a booth there, and you talked to them for about an hour. About an hour, yeah. 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 It's a really well-done design. I, um, I, I've never seen anything quite like that mechanism, but the suspension looks wicked strong. I, I have no idea. They had it done to an Indian in a, in a, in a Harley, and apparently Harley and Indian not interested. They're they're fools. I mean, this is this is stupid not to not to go into this for with Harley and and uh, and Indian. Uh, I think uh, all you got to do is tear off the front forks and and they've got mounting plates and everything already done for these two vehicles. I didn't get a chance to drive them because we were uh, we had to we had to skedaddle and this was right at the end of my trip. But I'll tell you, I was, I was yeah. really impressed. I really, really was impressed. And they said that the performance characteristics when you've got the three wheel, oh, and that's the other thing. If you're, <laughs> if you're older, some of us are older, and uh, maybe not, I'm, I'm f in fairly good shape, but there's other guys that used to ride but mm, maybe don't want to try and pick up an 800 pound bike. This one here is great because when you come to a stop and you turn off the key, the bike goes nick and it's now square to the world. Okay, so with a three-wheel bike, normally um, it sits square all the time. With this one, when you pull in, it'll lean to let you get off. You undo the key, nick, and it comes right back up 
to where you want it to be if you're if you're trying to jump on you uh, you come back onto the bike you stand beside it it'll lean down you can get on and then it'll bring you back up to normal great uh, absolutely fabulous I, I'm not sure whether that was uh, pneumatic or hydraulic or electric I'm not sure how they made it work but I'm telling you I was really impressed that was that's a really really good uh, a really good feature function and I have no clue Harley is one of our our customers I've tried to make some phone calls but I, I cannot get in touch with anybody uh, I don't know if they had some kind of a layoff or everybody retired or what have you but sure. uh, but I think we should we should be telling them about that 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 thing is uh, that's a really good feature that should be on either a Harley or an Indian or anybody that's got a got a heavy bike yeah yeah so moving on to the event and the people you met, Sandy. Yeah. Um, so you were interviewed by a couple people. The first was Nikki from Transport Evolved. Mm -hmm. um, so she has 141,000 subscribers and she's done 1,700 videos. How was your How was your time with Nikki? Actually, the time with almost every one of these people was uh, was yeah. pretty good. Nikki initially wanted to talk about something I wasn't really interested in talking about. Yeah. But she changed her mind and just talked about Archimoto. And I was on there for at least an hour. Yeah, 20. Yeah, I think it's 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, well, it was an hour, actually. And the other thing is I was baking in the sun. <laughs> I could not believe, <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe how hot it was and how sunny it was. So my skin is peeling a little bit. Sandy, I see you. We were both beat red at yeah, the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, and oh. uh, and I did not bring anything. I didn't bring sunscreen. I didn't anticipate. <laughs> well, in the in the little montage that we did on our teaser earlier this week, you had three different three or four different hats on during the yeah, whole thing. Right. Each hat got bigger and bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't my head getting bigger. I was, I was trying to shade. So uh, so I got um, I got um, uh, finally Archimoto gave me a giant. Giant hat. Um, what's her name? Sebastian. Is that yeah. her name? Yeah. Sebastian gave me this gigantor hat, and um, and so much thanks goes out to her because I was dying out there. Yeah, it was, uh, and I got really I, I sunburn anyways, but I was dying out there because every every time I turned around, oh, put this hat on, put that hat on, swap, 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 but I never got to keep any of them, yeah. and I didn't bring a hat. So. And Portland fooled us because it was sixty five. Yeah. Kind of cool in the morning, overcast. Yeah. So uh, myself, yourself, Zach, and Mike Oaks, who was with us, were kind of like, oh, yeah, well, let's just go to this thing. And then the, the sun came out, and it just cooked us. Yeah, but, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. No. So I did find out something, um, and this is for the older people, older men in the, in the crowd. I got back to my room. I took a shower because I was sweating all day and uh, we had a little event that we had to attend to, a little drinking and socializing kind of thing. I took a shower, I looked in the mirror and I knew I was toasty. I could barely touch my hands to my face. I was really burnt, ears and everything. So I'm, I look through my bag and I, I don't have anything like, uh, you know, what do you do for a sunburn or any kind of burn? So I thought, oh, Maybe I got some Vaseline. So I'm arranging around and I can't find any of that. So I wind up and there's a little jar in my, uh, <coughs> in my bag and it has something called bro cream. Okay, so I'm not a doctor or anything, but uh, I knew I had to do something. So I take the, take the lid off. This bro cream is for your hair. And, um, and I, if I get out of the shower and I don't comb my hair immediately, it turns into like a curly mess. So I have it in there. So I took it and I said, I'm going to see what I, so I took the bro cream, which is not <laughs> recommend, I'm not advocating this, but I took it and put it over my top of my forehead. Instantly the pain went away. So I slathered it all over my head and my neck and whatnot. <laughs> and I went to this party and, and uh, we, there's, you know, there's women there and whatnot. And, uh, and, and uh, normally I don't wear cologne or anything. So I walked by and this one woman is sitting next to me and she goes, I, I have to ask, what sort of cologne are you wearing? <laughs> I just slapped some bro cream all over my face. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of, um, <clears throat> that was my little story. And, but I had to do something. I, I could not, I, if I would have, um, if I would have not found that, I'm sure I, I would have, you know, turned into Sigarnagas. Sigarnagas was a guy in a story, uh, 
turned into a skeleton kind of a thing, I, my, sh my skin would have shrunk and I would have, I would have been in real pain. I was in pain already, so yeah. it worked out great. <clears throat> yeah, and beyond being interviewed on Transport Evolved, you probably met two, three, four, four dozen fans, people who yeah. watched our content. Yeah. So that was kind of nice. Now, granted, it was an event focused on small EVs, so it was a perfect yeah. demographic. Right. But yeah. I got to tell everybody here, Sandy gets recognized on the airplane, in the airport, yeah. three or four times as we're getting on. People are like, oh, it's Sandy Monroe. Yeah. You are recognizable, and <laughs> you wear exactly this when you travel, so. Yeah, well. We get free shirts at Monroe. That's why I joined the company <laughs> <laughs> for the wardrobe. Um, but uh, yeah, that that is true. And uh, and what I, what else I found was um, we had people with Archimoto shirts on, and I assumed that they either worked there or they owned one. And I found out that a lot of the some of the people that I I talked to anyway, uh, they had an Archimoto, but they also had a Tesla. They, in fact, the one guy worked at Tesla. Him and, uh, and his partner worked at Tesla. And the two of them um, were telling me, you know, they took the day off from Tesla, drove up to Portland. So on their, uh, they, I think they drove up on a Tesla, but they both have Archimotos. So um, they, uh, they, were, they, were, they were really keen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how many, uh, how, and then that old guy. Remember the guy that came up in a wheelchair? What's his name? Um, he's got an Archimoto anyway. Uh, he drives it around. Yeah. So uh, uh, he, I don't remember him. Uh, he he was a, he had a scraggly beard. I think you've got a picture of him. Uh, I I wrote exactly his name down. I can't think. Yeah. Of, I'm really bad with names. So anyway, uh, hopefully we'll we'll get a chance to talk to him as well. But this guy is uh, older than I am, quite a bit older than I am, and uh, and he. Uh, he still uh, loves life, and um, and he says that the most fun he's got is driving his Archimoto around. So mm -hmm. there you go. And he showed up. <coughs> he came with leathers and a helmet and everything because he wanted to try the uh, the new sport. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing we forgot to mention. Oh yeah, yeah, the sport. Um, so they've got the sport, which doesn't have the roll cage or the windshield and whatnot. Um, and a lot of people were driving those around, but that one truly is a trike. You have to have a helmet on, and you had to have leathers is, and is boots. Is it called a, the Roadster? I think you're right. I think so it I think is. It's called yeah. the Roadster. I think it's yeah. called the Roadster. I think you're correct. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that that uh, that bike, I did not get a chance to ride that. Um, after I got burned, and they offered me the uh, the opportunity, pulling a helmet on just did not appeal at all. So mm -hmm. I, I never got a chance to ride. And you didn't get a ride on any of them. Well, I was working, Sandy. Yeah, and filming. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, it was uh, it was a good time. We all we all had a good time. Yeah. So before we wrap up, do you want to give everybody an update on the Model S Plat? Uh, yeah, I, I can tell you for sure that we have our name in, and uh, we've got things uh, things are on the way, I guess. But um, the uh, the due date or our date has kind of like uh, uh, vanished. So uh, we've heard a lot of stories about how they're they're making some sort of an up grade or something's happening anyway so we're not sure when we're going to get our plaid but uh, but we're looking forward to it mm -hmm. um we got i got dozens of questions some people just came up hi how are you uh sandy nice to see you when are you getting your plaid i yeah. mean it was just that it was all one long sentence yeah so we're thinking september yeah we're hoping september yeah, we're keeping our fingers crossed yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> but the fundraising effort we did raise all the money and, yeah. and I think you mentioned that in a previous episode that we had one final right. donor help us get us yeah. across the line, but we raised every penny that we set out to raise, yeah. all 130000 yeah. So anybody watching, thank you very much. Yeah, so we thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that maybe we should mention is that um, Karsten um, from, uh, from Faraday has asked if uh, maybe I'd like to go for a ride so uh, Corey, myself, and uh, Eric. Eric is go we're gonna we're gonna take the Model Three down, and uh, we're gonna ride. I'm gonna ride with uh, Karsten um, in the new uh, the new Faraday product from Chicago to uh, St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis. I was gonna say Atlanta there for a second. Yeah, St. Louis. So um, uh, you might want to tune into that. That might be live streaming. 
we can mm -hmm. make it work, but, uh, but if not, it'll pop up as a, as a Monroe Live episode. It'll give me the chance to see uh, <laughs> what it's like if you're a bazillionaire. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the, that's quite a luxury vehicle. Uh, I really liked it when I saw it with the opera doors and all the other stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And later this week we will have the rear motor episode for the Mustang Mach-E. Right. Um, yeah, I don't want to spoil that, but um, it's stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes, that, uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, thanks very much for watching, and especially Cronall for, uh, for the, uh, the home stretch uh, uh, donation of mm, basically 20 grand or somewhere along that line. Um, it's been a, a real hoot trying to uh, scrape up the money and whatnot. Um, people are asking me how they can sell stickers for 13 bucks a piece. So, so anyways, um, this was a great uh, fundraising raising effort and I, I really am glad and happy that, uh, that uh, all you guys out there have donated to Monroe and I, I just thank you very much and stay tuned. We'll be back at you as soon as we possibly can. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.